Welcome to Chronicles with Chronic Writer. After the overwhelming support that we got from the first episode of uh, Let's Talk Rocket Science that I did with my father, I'm getting into the second episode today. In today's episode, my dad will talk about how different countries came together to support or contribute to Indian rocket science. And we are going to talk about manned missions. And finally, we are going to talk about the future roadmap that India is taking. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe, click the bell icon and get notified whenever there is a new video. Let's dive into the new video. We are talking about ISRO rockets which we send indigenously. But I remember uh, in the 90s, early 90s I guess, you, you went to Russia. So what is this whole concept about Indian scientists heading to Russia? The head store of a liquid engine or a cryogenic engine is a very complex technology. We need some help from people who have already developed it. If you look at it, the Vikas engine used in the, as the second stage of GSLV and also second stage of PSLV is a liquid engine and that for that development a team went to France and from French we got, we were, the teams are trained in France and using the technology what we saw there, it was developed here. It is a slightly different than what we saw uh, French are using for their Aryan, Aryan vehicle. Similarly, the cryogenic the te technology transfer agreement was with, between USSR at that time, but by the time the team went, uh, USSR disintegrated, so it became Russia. We did not have a technology transfer, so the team was trained in Russia for a few months and based on the knowledge what they learned, what they saw, they took a few years to develop it into a cryogenic engine and stage so that it can be used in the GSLV third stage and also in the Mark 3 and Mark 2 programs, the cryogenic stages are based on the technology we understood from Russians. So uh, how different uh, it is uh, from the way we develop rockets to how the Russians uh, do it? Uh, Russians normally do it from the fundamentals. They have a very strong fundamental in developing uh, the components, the design, the structure, everything they have, the, they go into the fundamentals and uh, with the fundamental base they are doing that. Our training in Russia was much helpful because we could understand where to look for in the rocket engine development and being an instrumentation engineer, I was also, we had to look out how to do the measurements, how to do it accurately, how to do it correctly. This knowledge they gave me from the fundamental physics so that uh, when I apply for our own indigenous development rockets, it will be very useful because we can start applying the same logic and go for a very perfect technology. That way, interaction with the Russians helped us a lot. There are a lot of scientists India has produced, but why is Abdul Kalam so famous? Abdul Kalam is a technocrat, scientist and a manager. He spent most of his life for this rocketry. And also at the same time, uh, he was very human in dealing with personals working under him. Very, very uh, sympathetic, very, very understanding so that he knows how to extract the maximum work from anybody. That is how in critical days, he was able to make the XS SLV successful and later he was mo moved to DRDO and most of the missiles what India now flies successfully. I think he has a major hand in that. Uh, PSLV, GSLV, where are we in space technology right now? Space technology is a very complex technology and very costly technology also. Uh, in the world, uh, Russia, America, then Europe, actually Europe, a lot of countries joined together formed the Europe Space Agency, ESA. Then Japan, they said China and we are the sixth country. There are some other players like Brazil, Iraq, Korea, North Korea, uh, maybe Israel, there are Australia and Britain. There are some minor players, they are also in this uh, rocketry. But we now at the moment hold the sixth position of having a capability. I think we have two unique capabilities. We are able to 
make a rocket to launch a satellite and we are also capable of making satellites to be launched okay uh, but off late uh, uh, elon musk has shot into fame uh, sending cost friendly rockets into space what is this thing about elon musk and spacex it's slightly different i think we cannot take apply american privatization to indian privatization straight away that i think a particular component as uh, space has been given to him so the nasa wanted to concentrate on uh, maybe for moon mars missions and uh, they they are they're maintaining the inter- international space station and launching their uh, american satellites components the communication or remote sensing or military satellites they wanted to give to a private company company that role i think uh, spacex and some other companies which are coming up in blue blue orion and some other companies are coming up in usa usa are taking it up coming to manned mission uh, we see i think uh, the first manned mission to moon was in 1969 why is india not yet there it's been more than 54 years it's actually 1960s it was a cold war and a space war between usa and ussr but for but for that that time that would have been not been possible uh, the whole country's efforts energy maybe even the budget was poured on to that particular project and that was been carried out it is not that uh, even america after doing it uh, 769 maybe 6 or 7 launches up to 1972 they dropped it because uh, it was not yielding the returns what they have put into that program but then then they started concentrating on our sh- uh, shuttle they concentrating on uh, inter- uh, international space stations they are concentrating on making big satellites commercial satellites uh, commercially viable satellites like that they concentrated on uh, other areas where they it started bringing income to the nation so we cannot just like that compare uh, manned mission by america and why they that such a postponement we cannot just just like that compare it but are we there yet is the question yes we can make a manned mission today With the vehicles what we have the psl mark 3 and even mark 2 is capable of carrying one person or two person and mark 3 is capable of carrying easily two person and make a sub orbit maybe up to 400 kilometers and rotate the earth and come back if you have a space station we can go to the space station and come back but today the problem is uh, we are not yet in the space station a- area we are not developed bigger rockets so that we can build our own space station so our manned mission is only a scientific achievement we are uh, we are also one among the six nations which is capable of putting manned mission that is major thing but we it's a long way to go to make it as a useful mission so i'm just going to play devil's advocate here uh, uh, we are launching a lot of rockets bi monthly we are launching rockets even uh, yesterday there was a rocket, rocket launch from isro uh, are these really useful yeah they are all useful because PSLV launches satellites of low earth orbits with are used for remote sensing there are a lot of thematic satellites some satellites are uh, oceanographic studies where even it helps the fishermen to locate fishes some are used for uh, forestry studies it helps the nation to uh, nation building and infrastructure building there are some thematic satellites like education satellites medical satellites which helps in connecting hospitals and education institutions so that a group maybe education satellite a professor's lecture can be uh, seen by students of different colleges without moving from their place that type of thematic satellites are being launched using pslv and also we have satellites uh, geos geosynchronous satellites at the moment we have capability to launch two ton satellite and a three ton satellites three and a half ton satellites they are communication satellites they can uh, service internet networks and also they can service our tv networks can you take us through uh, future of space research in india at the moment we can launch a 3 and 1/2 ton uh, satellite into jsingannas but the world needs launch vehicle capability to launch a 6 to 8 ton satellite in orbit that is only economically viable 
and there are a lot of takers in the world for such satellites. We are now developing a vehicle called universe, uh, ULV with semi cryogenic engine. The engine is in the development stage. Maybe it may take another few years to come out and at that time we will be competitive in the satellite launching with many other countries also. What is the, what is the relationship between colleges, research institutes and then ISRO in India compared to the research institutes and colleges in the U.S. with NASA? Uh, NASA's approach and uh, ISRO approach in India are totally different. Uh, NASA is only a coordinator and gets the thing done through many private agencies, universities, colleges, then private labs, etc. They fund it. Even many of the sensor, I have seen many of the sensor developments are done by companies. NASA funds it and uh, they have a tie up program. In the initial stages, those sensors manufacture should be only sold to NASA. Then later, uh, they allow them to send it to other people also. So, the, such a uh, type of uh, thing is available in NASA because they were able to have the multi uh, companies to support them on research and products. But India, that is not, uh, there are some companies like fabrication, we have uh, supports from many major, many major players. But to carry out uh, fundamental research and make a development of uh, right from scratch, uh, such a thing is not uh, coming up and, and now the Indian government is trying for that. And only future can only answer whether we have been successful in that or still we have a long way to go. Uh, thank you for your time, Ampa. I think uh, hopefully uh, I covered uh, all the questions uh, most of the viewers also might be having. So if you have any more questions, please add it in the comments. Uh, I'll just try to have one more session with Ampa. Thank you so much, Ampa. Thank you. Thank you.